Woodbridge is the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town, and we're here tonight for a whole lot of different reasons. Uh, recognizing several of our police officers, first aid squad members. Is that the one back? Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go. Let me go reverse order. <laughs> our first awards are to two of our police officers, Detective Michael Barbado and Detective Brian Vela. Um, this was such a good um, award that we have members, uh, we have our county prosecutor. Uh, Mr. Carey here, and we have representatives of the FBI here. Uh, this was a, a, an arrest, uh, a, a job that was national in scope. I'll let them talk more about it, and I'll fill in the blanks if there's anything they don't talk about. So would you gentlemen mind coming up to uh, present these awards? I'll let you go first. Since, um, lady, I'm sorry, there you are. <laughs> uh, basically, the way it works here is the FBI trumps us and the mayor and the county prosecutor trumps us and the mayor so we will let them take this over and uh, present the awards okay okay ready john mccormick hi carrie nice Let's to meet see. you nice to meet you everybody good evening um Okay, uh, it's not a Springsteen concert, unfortunately, it's just me. Um, I'm representing the uh, Newark office of the FBI. I'm recently retired from uh, Newark office, retired about three weeks ago. Do, I've done, did about 30, over 30 years there. Um, I'm here to acknowledge, uh, in addition to uh, Detectives Barbado and Vela, there they are, um, acknowledge uh, members of the uh, Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office as well. John Seleski, um, Luke Keto and Greg Morris. Um, you, why don't you guys come up, if you don't mind. Sorry, sorry if I'm screwing this up. Um, in September of last year, um, a crew of seven people were arrested and charged federally with bank fraud and aggravated identity theft. Uh, the crew is known, known nationally as the Felony Lang Gang. You've probably been reading about them in the newspapers. Um, basically, it's a, it's a group that's an organized group. They're organized doing car burglaries and aggravated identity theft. Um, the origins of the group go, go to uh, South Florida, but they've been operational uh, throughout the country, multiple, multiple jurisdictions throughout the country. Um, basically, what they do is they break into cars at, uh, at, gymnas at gyms, targeting women going to gyms and leaving their purses and their whatever in the car. They'll smash the windows, rummage through the car, and take, basically, they're looking for your driver's license, they're looking for any, any, identi any identifying cards, and they're also looking for checkbooks. A lot of women, a lot of men also, but mostly women still carry checkbooks. Don't do that. There's no reason to carry a checkbook. Anyway, um, what the crew then does is they recruit other women, usually women that are strung out on drugs. Some of these women are in treatment facilities trying to get help, uh, lure basically money, money at them to get them to pose as the identity holder of the person's ID that, identi identity that they, that they took. Anyway, this, this has been going on across the country uh, since probably 2014, 2015. In Jersey, uh, started very heavy at the end of 2015. Um, Back in January through May of uh, 2017, uh, detectives uh, Barbado and Vela uh, rolled up on a couple different instances, situations where uh, members of this group were attempting a bank fraud. The bank frauds are committed at, I should, I should explain the felony and land gang thing. Um, the frauds are, are attempted at the drive-throughs of these banks because these women are not the identity holders the actual uh, main subjects of the, of, uh, in the crew. Um, they, purchase, they purchase makeup, they purchase wigs in order to alter the, for, for these girls that they recruit uh, to alter their appearances so that they can look as much as they can as the identity holder. The advantage of doing the drive-through is obviously you have a distance between the drive-through window and the, and the teller doing the transaction. Um, they also rent cars, they switch out license plates, they do, they do a, a lot, a lot of work, uh, and they make a lot, a lot of money. Uh, so Barbado and, uh, and Vela, um, they rolled up on 
on a situation where it was attempted bank fraud and basically made an arrest and got a great statement from a girl, then got a great statement from another girl and developed the case, developed the case, R realized the case was really, really big in terms of just the, the, uh, the jurisdictions in New Jersey, the townships in New Jersey, they were, get, they were getting hit by this crew. So they reached out for Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office. I have a great relation, had, still do, uh, even though I'm retired, uh, with Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office. They know what we can work, what we'll do federally, what we can't do federally. Uh, federally, generally speaking, you get more bang for your buck, uh, better sentences. Um, everything's under one umbrella. It's, it's a really good situation. If we can do it, we do it. Um, so. Instead of just saying, hey, Carrie, here's a case, do what you do, whatever you do. We worked it together. Um, the relationship that they built with a couple of the people that they arrested uh, was strong. They, they were truthful with them, as always. And they met me, and we sort of uh, made a federal case out of it, <laughs> uh, which, is, which, which is always my objective. Um, so we arrested seven people. Uh, the main subject, his name is David Relford. He's the main, he did all the car burglaries. I mean, he probably hit every township in New Jersey. Um, then they went out and did all, all the bank frauds. Without, without him, um, a lot of the other people sort of were in and out of the group, especially the girls, because they're not very reliable, because most of them had drug problems, so they're not very reliable, so they just pluck other girls out of wherever. Um, but David Relford, uh, Damon Bullock, and Jakari Arnold. Um, that those are the three main subjects of our case. The rest of them, again, they're, they're, they're charged federally. Seven people are charged federally. Uh, so far, no one's pled guilty. Um, most of them are still in federal jail, pending trial or, or guilty plea, whatever. Um, anyway, I, I, I wanted to be the one to do this for these guys because even though I'm no longer in the FBI, uh, and I didn't want to wait too much longer because I plan on traveling and all that nonsense. Um, so I, I, I wanted to be the one to recognize them. Uh, we got some, uh, our headquarters does very, really nice um, uh, certificates uh, of appreciation. So I'd like to present each of you with one. I'm just going to read one of them now. Okay. Those are all basically the same except for the name. Okay. Uh, U.S. Department of Justice, FBI, to Mike Barbato. The FBI extends its appreciation for your outstanding assistance in a joint investigative effort. Your contributions were immeasurable, and you have the gratitude of the FBI for all you did to help accomplish the objectives of the investigation. You can be proud of the role you played, and I, and I join my associates with whom you worked in congratulating you on a job well done. March 2018, signed by uh, Director, he's still our director, Christopher Ray. You know, I, I have nothing else to add to this. Everything that um, the FBI agent said is in our proclamations, but I would like to present our two officers, Mike Barbado, Detective Mike Barbado. Thank you. And Detective Brian Bell. And anybody who watches TV 35 or watches the meetings know we always talk about how great our police are. And here it is, the FBI and the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office are agreeing with us that we have tremendous police officers. Uh, Ma'am, I believe that we have the best police force in the state of New Jersey. I truly do. We're nationally accredited every three years, one of only a handful of departments in the state of New Jersey that are. And we're very, very proud of our police officers. And you just honored two of them. And I think it's terrific. It says a lot about our force. So thank you. Okay, we also have a, a practice of honoring a police officer of the quarter, <clears throat> and I'm proud to say that this, the first quarter, January 1st of 18 to March 31st of 18, the police officer of the first quarter is Joseph Russick. Congratulations, sir. 
I don't want to read the whole proclamation, but it says Police Officer Joseph Russick initiated and conducted motor vehicle stops in response to calls for service, which resulted in enforcement actions to include the issuance of traffic summonses, uh, DWI summonses, enforcement of outstanding arrest warrants, and the arrest of defendants on violations of New Jersey criminal statutes. And whereas in January of 18, Russick, while conducting assigned patrol responsibilities, initiated a motor vehicle stop for equipment violations, which resulted in the arrest of the, dr of the driver as a fugitive from justice. A separate investigation of an unregistered vehicle re resulted in the arrest of the driver and passenger on narcotics violations, possession of a controlled substance, which was heroin, and a fugitive from justice. So this is a, an outstanding police officer and an outstanding police department. Congratulations on the award for a police officer of the first quarter. We had so many dignitaries when we started, I forgot to introduce the uh, people up at the dais here. Uh, police Director Bob Hubner, Deputy Police Director Joe Niski, Chief Law Enforcement Officer Scott Kuzma, Fifth Ward Councilwoman and Council President Debbie Meehan, uh, Third Ward Councilman Corey Spiller, Second Ward Councilman Howie Bauer, Fourth Ward Councilman Vero Patel, Councilman at Large Kyle Anderson, First Ward Councilman Nancy Drum, Councilman at Large Brian Small, and Councilman at Large Greg Ficarra. We have eight of the nine council people here an hour early for all these awards. Only Liz Betts, who's home recovering from surgery, prevents us from having uh, all nine here. So thank you all for being here. We have some representatives uh, from uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Maria Estevez and Irma DeMatos. Would you come up, please? I would like to now call up officers Brian Dorward, Joseph Angelo, and Edward Lieutenant Edward Barrett. And I'd like to read their proclamation. Uh, whereas Mothers Against Drunk Driving maintains the mission to end drunk driving, help fight drug driving, support the victims of the violent crime of drunk driving, and prevent underage drinking, and annually recognizes police, police officers that go above and beyond the call of duty in the fight to prevent drunk and drug driving. And whereas and each one has their own, Dorward, Angelo, and Barrett, um, demonstrate a commitment to policing, public safety, and law enforcement through the aggressive enforcement of New Jersey's DWI statutes, which resulted in the arrest of 84 drivers charged with DWI in 2017. So each officer has their own proclamation, and uh, you look like you're ready to say something. So I'll turn it over to you. Okay, I want to congratulate these officers, and I want to tell you that Woodbridge Township is the safest township in Middlesex County because you have these heroes protecting you. Uh, when they stop an impaired driver, they are preventing a crash and they're saving lives. Could be the life of the driver, could be the life of innocent people that this driver, you know, would have struck, but they are out there protecting. And they have the highest numbers in Middlesex County. So we are very proud of them, and on June 12th, they will be honored again um, at the um, law enforcement breakfast in uh, Rutgers University, where about 500 police officers from out, you know, the whole state will be there. So I just want you to be very proud of these officers. Well, um, Brian Darwood, who will be the top cop for Middlesex County. Um, <laughs> Joseph Angelo came second. And Lieutenant Edward Barrett came third. So, thank you. Very proud of them. Thank you. Thank you. So, all I can say once again is not just your mayor telling you how great our police force is, it's another outside entity coming into Woodbridge for the specific purpose of congratulating our officers and saying how great they are. Number one in the county, not so bad. Ready for pictures? Okay, next up we have a special recognition for police officer Santiago Tapia. Not here? Was he here? Not here? Do we want to save it when we can get him here? Sure. All right, we'll save it. We won't tell you what he did. <laughs> EMTs. All right, next up we have an award for. Uh, EMT Keith Ferriolo, a supervisor of the Avenal Colonial First Aid Squad. Brian Small uh, would like to join me up here. He is uh, still an active member of the Port Reading First Aid Squad. I'd like to call up Keith. Where is Keith? Oh, here you go. Congratulations. Let me tell you why he's here. Uh, I'll skip the preliminary stuff. Uh, whereas EMT Keith Ferriolo, Supervisor Avenal Colonia First Aid Squad has served as an EMT for more than 22 years, including six with Avenal. 
He's a career fighter fighter at the city of Rahway, a team leader for the Union County Police Department Arson Investigations Unit, and whereas EMT Ferriello has dem demonstrated exceptional leadership, service, commitment, and compassion in providing emergency medical patient care and excellence in the performance of emergency medical services, and stands as the recipient of the Woodbridge Township EMT of the first quarter. So we're also honoring an EMT every quarter going forward, and he's honored tonight before his peers and all members of the squad. Congratulations, EMT Keith Ferriello. We also have, uh, come on, no, come on up, Laura. Laura Higgins is our um, the yeah. coordinator of all the four uh, first aid squads in town. You want to make a presentation? Sure. Um, so we got Keith a Lippman stethoscope. It's pretty nice. Uh, with a nice tag that says EMT of the quarter. We want Keith to know how appreciated he is for all the work that he does do uh, for our community. He also, you know, at work, he um, is really good at making sure shifts are covered and helping when people need help and, um, you know, just ensuring that Avenal Colonia First Aid Squad's mission is carried out in, in the right manner. Um, and we're very proud to have him with us, so we wanted to present him with something. Yeah. Councilman Small. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in 2011, when we reopened Avenel Colonia First Aid Squad, uh, Keith uh, was one of our first employees hired under John McHale, Bob Snowfield, and Tony Kersey, who's out here today. Uh, it's been an honor and a pri privilege for me working along with Keith uh, through the EMS, uh, my years as the EMS manager. And uh, anytime we get to recognize anybody in the EMS field, it's a great day. Thank you. Our last award tonight is to recognize the Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks, Woodbridge Elks Lodge 2116, on their 150th anniversary. Um, I can speak to this group personally. I'm a member of the Elks. They do amazing things for our community. Uh, just about every other weekend or every third weekend, there's breakfast where groups come in and can literally make thousands of dollars. Uh, and it's the best breakfast in town. Um, don't tell Sharon from Not Just Bagels I said that, um, but it, it's just a fantastic opportunity for groups to come in, uh, put some effort in and raise significant, significant amounts of money. Uh, I'll let the elk speak for the rest of the things they do. In fact, I'll call Bob Snowfield back up. Not only is he involved with the Avenal Colonia First Aid Squad, but he is the uh, exalted ruler of this lodge as of April 1st, right? We've got a couple of past exalted rulers. We've got a whole lot of officers up there, so please all come up and get around me while I read the proclamation. Whereas the Elks, founded in New York City on February 16th, 1867, by Charles Algernon Sidney Vivian and a handful of friends, and across the country they have seven 750,000 Elks and 1,900 lodges, and whereas the Elks invest millions of hours each year to build stronger communities, assist homeless veterans, and implement programs geared to combat youthful drug addiction. To that end, the Elks have dispersed more than $3.6 billion in funds, goods, and services to the nation's veterans, the disadvantaged and handicapped citizens, and to patriotic and ci civic programs. And whereas Woodbridge Lodge 2116 of the Elks was instituted on April 5, 1959, and has continuously provided opportunities for scholarships for graduating high school senior students, grants to support community needs to include addiction services in local food banks. They assist the veterans in Menlo Park Veterans Home and provides opportunities for special needs children to attend Elks Camp Moore and so many other things. And they put the needs of others before themselves and stand as one of the finest service, service organizations providing supplies and relief in time of crisis. And as I said, I see firsthand what these men and women do. They're a, a terrific organization. They do great things for our town. Uh, Mr. Snowfield, please accept this proclamation on behalf of Thank our you very mayor much. and council. Thank you very much. And I'll ask you to um, say a few words and expand. I, I didn't cover it fairly. Uh, you know so, so much more about what we do. Take the opportunity to talk about the local law uh, chapter of the Elks. Well, the first thing we want to do is uh, one of our mottos is Elks Care, Elks Share. And we're going to start right off the bat. I'm going to introduce our Elks National Foundation chairman, chairwoman. And uh, one of the things we do is we work with our Grand Lodge to get grants to disperse to the community. And one of the big things, the theme this year with the Grand Lodge is community awareness. Uh, a lot of people know, they've, they've heard the Elks, you know, what do the Elks do? Well, this is one of the things we do. We provide funds to the community to support them in many ways. I'm going to let Paula Kopcho, our uh, Elks National Foundation chairwoman, come up and talk about that. Thank you for inviting us to the council today. 
The Woodbridge Elks has been located on Rollway Avenue, and we are now celebrating our 60th anniversary. We went from a burned out building and to a lodge with a meeting hall to the building that you see today, built in 1975. We've always been involved in the community, but usually in a very quiet way. We use the hall for parties for the children, for social events for our members, and for community meetings. Our aim is to lend a helping hand where possible. This past year, our exalted roller, Judy Columbus, who, who is not with us this evening, asked me to chair the charity arm of the Woodbridge Elks, the National Elks National Foundation Committee. My job was to raise money to send to the Elks National Foundation, located in Chicago. We sent in $2,800 and got back $8,500 in three grants for the community investment programs. One of the grants is going to our special children of Woodbridge Township to send them to Elks Camp Moore, where they will have a week of campers' experience with one of our with counselors one-on-one -on -one and give their caregivers a week of respite. One of the grants is being used to purchase items for welcome home kits to help the homeless veterans and get back on their feet. The third grant is a $1,500 anniversary grant that can be used for any worthy community cause. The grant is celebrating the 150th anniversary of Elkdom and was authorized by our national president, Malcolm McPherson, who is from the state of New Jersey, for any lodge willing to apply. After much discussion, our lodge decided to split the grant three ways. I am happy to deliver these funds to you today. To the t police department, we give $500 for your use to see as, to use as you <laughs> see the need. Our thought was for vests, but you may use it as you see necessary. To the addiction services group, we're giving $500 for whatever supplies or training you can use it for. And to the domestic violence response team, we give $500 as well to be used again for supplies and training. You all do such wonderful and important work and we're proud to make these donations and hopefully we'll be back next year. Let's call up uh, maybe Bob Hubner on behalf of the Woodbridge Police Department. No, 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 Director Hubner. Jo 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 oh, Joelle, okay. Joelle and Mark Zeno are two community affairs officers. Go ahead, you do that. Uh, from our Addiction Services Department, we have Chris Powers here. And from our domestic violence response team, we have Officer Cindy Chavez. And all the DVRT people. And a lot of our DVRT okay. people. Just a minute. You can present that to them. Where's that thing? So our exalted ruler, Mr. Snowfield, uh, we wrote something for his um, ad book to celebrate. No, he wrote the ad. He took an ad in our 350th ad book. And we wrote, the Woodbridge Ducks are a very important nonprofit organization that serves our community in many ways, whether it's holding various fundraisers which help many people and civic organizations in our township, including our veterans groups, scholarships for students, events for youth activities, breakfast which benefits schools and first responders, or Relay for Life which supports cancer research. The Elks warmly support our community, and I would recommend you stop by and attend some of their events, or maybe even think about helping their efforts by becoming a member of the Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks. And I signed me. That's a long sentence, man. I need some, <laughs> I, I need some more periods in there. So um, congratulations. I know, Nancy, you're a mem, a mem, an Elk? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else a Woodbridge Elk? Kyle is? Brian is? Anybody else? Anybody want to come up? Nancy, you want to talk? Say a few words? a little uh, soft, a big soft spot for the Woodbridge Jelks. I joined, probably became a member about three years or four years ago, and um, it's just really amazing to me what they do for the community. They're always there for every one of the teams, anybody that ever asked them, for the special needs community, a great group of people who just really, really care. Um, I believe in their mission. I do the soccer shoot because nobody else <laughs> does it. 
But everyone joins together and supports each other and what they do for the community, I just have to say, is quite amazing. All the breakfasts uh, for all the teams. I know that many of the council people are very involved and really appreciate, if I could speak on behalf of them, all of your efforts for the community as really uh, shining stars. And uh, I know that they're always looking for new members, so if I could give a pitch for that, just see Rob or myself and uh, anybody up here to become a member. It's very affordable and they just would like, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, people to become a part of the organization. There's power in numbers and uh, there's they need more people to you know join with them and support them so sorry I'm going on no, and on okay. <laughs> thank you very much um, appreciate all your hard work thank you, you, uh, thank you so much. Can I just ask, um, one what real quick though what? okay you're always giving awards out to everybody right you're giving to the town giving 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 you know, you get up every day thinking about what can you do for the town. Well, now this is our turn to kind of recognize you. We're all proud and honored to recognize you as the Elk of the Month. Oh, wow. <laughs> Woo! Thanks, Bob. <laughs> and not only that, our uh, special deputy Grand Exalted Ruler, Francis DeCivis, contacted our home office in Chicago and saw befitting, the home office saw befitting to give you the outstanding service commendation to the Honorable John McCormick. Wow, cool. Thanks, man. Oh, and it comes with a prize. Well, you, you got it, yeah. It comes with a, oh. This is, this is a can of, oh, a can of cran cranberry sauce. You know sauce. what that's for. All right, so the Elks had a, Every six months after Thanksgiving, they have a Thanksgiving dinner. And last year I went and I got there in the late side and they were out of cranberry sauce. And now, people, when the kids ask me when I go to third grade classes, what's your favorite food? My favorite food is turkey with cranberry sauce. But the cheap stuff, not the fancy stuff with real cranberries, the cheap stuff, ocean spray. This is not ocean spray. This is organic. I probably wouldn't like this. <laughs> But we'll get you it's, get it's you the open. thought that counts. Um, it's not the cheap stuff, but um, thank you. You just caught me by surprise. I had no Absolutely. idea this was going to happen. So thank you, you very much. It. You deserve it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. We have a great relationship. As I said, I'm a member. I love the organization. I love going down there. They do great things. This is a surprise. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think um, what I was going to say when I walked up is, Joelle or Mark, do you want to say anything on behalf of the... Uh, Police department on the uh, the check you got. We just want to say thank you on the behalf of the, the Woodbridge Police Department. We plan to use this to branch out with our community and to buy vests for our officers. Thank you very much. And uh, Chris Powers on behalf of the Addiction Services. Yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you very much and that we appreciate your donation. And that's all I got. <laughs> And uh, Walter, the new president or the new, new chairman uh, of the domestic violence response team. Thank you. <clears throat> this year, uh, the township is going to be 350 years old. We're going to be 25 years uh, pr providing services to victims and survivors of domestic violence in Woodbridge. We're known as the best DV team in Middlesex County, and that's... <clears throat> primarily because of the township leadership and because of the cooperation of the police department. Thank you. Thanks, great. Appreciate Thank it. You. Those requirements of the open public meeting law have been satisfied concerning this meeting. The Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger posted a notice on December 22, 2017. It was posted also on the Municipal Bulletin Board and it should be so noted in the minutes of this meeting. Councilman Anderson. Here. Councilman Ficara. Here. Councilwoman Drum. Here. Councilwoman De Jesus. Councilman Small. Here. Councilman Patel. Here. Councilman Bauer. Here. Vice President Spiller. Here. President Meehan. Here. I get a motion to approve the minutes from May 20, uh, May 8th. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have.
We have several second reading ordinances tonight, too, in particular. The first one is letter A. We'll take letter A. It's an ordinance authorizing directing that a title and possession of certain real property be acquired by purchase or condemnation, which is 181 Avenel Street. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public here and be open? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter A, letter A only. Uh, good evening, Council President uh, Jerry Trebacco Hopeline. Uh, just see why exactly are we condemning this property? That's I'm not too familiar with the area. Is that over by the train station? Or? Yes. yes. Yeah, what are we going to use it for? Parking. Parking. Pardon? Parking. 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 We're going to knock the building down? Yeah. On yourself. Yes. yes. Thank you. On here? Okay, yeah. And um, who's going to be paying for the property? We The taxpayer or pilot or what? Uh, that'll be no. That actually will be paid for by um, through the budget through the budget, not through our budget process. Oh, okay, so it's been budgeting and stuff like that. Are we bonding it out or? What do we have to? No. We have to acquire uh, acquire the property first. You have to acquire. We have to acquire. acquire. And who determines the uh, fair market value of this property? The appraiser. The appraiser, and have we determined what the uh, market value is of that property yet? No, not actually yeah. this time. We just have to start the process, then we have the appraisal done, and then we'll get the amount. Do we have to change any zoning uh, ordinances or anything like that to change no. it from a, uh, the, a house to a thing on that? No. Okay. Okay. We'll keep the uh, watch on it. Thank you. Are there any other comments on letter A? Letter A only? Here, no other comment. Can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed? The ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Letter B is an amendment to section 7 38.1 handicap parking, and this is to add Ryan Street uh, on our list. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and a public hearing be open? Motion. Second. Questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter B, letter B only. Hearing no comment from the public, can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed? The order to be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Letters C and D are first reading ordinances. Can I get a motion that these ordinances be passed on first reading, published in the Home News Tribune? on May 25th, 2018, with notice of public hearing to be held on June 12th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Resolutions before you. Uh, your list shows one through 22. I notified you earlier I added on 23. So can I get a motion to approve one through 23 by consent? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. We will now open the public portion of the meeting. If you'd like to speak, we ask that you go to the microphone, state your name and the town you're from. Just keep in mind there's a five minute limit. Robert Messi, no guns at 434 Alpine Street. And let's make the water cleaner. I'm paying pretty high for a water bill in Perth Amboy for drinking water, so make it a little cleaner. Help, help. The First Amendment. I went to Edison uh, yeah, yes, yesterday, no, Monday. <laughs> the president's very nice. He gives me a little more time than you, President Sheeney. And uh, he says you can't talk about, you got to talk about uh, Edison, just about Edison. I can't believe it. he's like uh, South End boy. Uh, uh, Mickey Gross, another president. You got to talk about South End boy and Edison. What about the First Amendment? First Amendment. I guess it don't don't mean nothing to me. Only it means something to that football player. Guys make it. He, he takes the kneel and nothing said, nothing done about it. Oh, he's got his he got the got his right to do whatever he does. He always got an excuse for for Mr. Messi. They don't have nothing. You just can't do it. You can't do it because I'm no football player. Okay, I want to talk about the New Jersey Turnpike. And the PNC Art Center. I haven't, I haven't been, I didn't go last week. They had a good show Thursday. 
Frank Sinatra, that's my kind of music. I was scared, or they're, they're bullying me, or I got scared. And they had one Friday do up on you, and they're going to have one tomorrow, too, with the five tenors from Texas. They're very good. I'm not going to go. I'm just scared. They're bullying me. So I don't know if I'm scared or being smart. And I'm, right after this meeting, I'm going to Homedale. Talk to the mayor there. He was very rude to me the last two meetings. He cut me short. Just didn't think nothing of me, like uh, nothing. So I go there tonight and make my point. I was thinking of going there, pick it, pick it to the art center, so I don't know what I'm going to do. It's uh, been very rough. No happy days for me. No happy days wherever I go. And in my, my town, Port Amboy, I, I signed a complaint about this girl, Lauren Mead. I made a complaint about lawyer Dennis Kahn. Key evidence. What, what the defendant said, and, and I, I tried to get across, but nothing happened, and she didn't even give it to the judge, Gonzalez. Every time I went up there, she said, oh, Judge Gonzalez didn't read it yet. He's not look, he didn't look at it. So one day, I went to talk to Judge Gonzalez at the hearing, at, during, the, during the, when he was doing, doing his uh, judgeship. So I, I waited five, five hours. I, I was at 8.30 to 1.30. I finally talked to him. He said he never received it, and uh, I said, what about the girl? What could there be done? Said, oh, I know, I know uh, Lauren. He knows her, but it, I guess I don't mean nothing. Every time I complain or do something, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Mr. Messi, we wish we could help you with all your issues that you have, but these are, these are issues you have in other towns. And we've tried to help you here a few times. I believe you've talked to Mr. Gofflin and a couple other people. But if they're not in our towns, we can't help you with those issues. Well, there's a lot of people watching it on TV and here. So they'll know about it or whatever. Yeah, one girl told me, talking about you, President. No, she can't help you. She, because she, she said the same thing you're saying. But one day I'm in a movie in, in Clark. She's with a girlfriend. I heard a girlfriend said, oh, he's with his flag, he should take a bath. <laughs> I don't take baths, I take showers. There you go. I don't even know the lady. I don't even know her. I always seem to get, a, always seem to get in trouble. All kind of problems. So I'm going to keep plugging along until uh, something happens. What about that football player? He, 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 they take a knee, nobody says nothing. I used to have a sign saying, don't, don't watch NFL football. Man, did they come at me. Quite a few people, quite a few people. I remember I was at a festival outside of Westville. I can't think of the town. The guy comes up to me, say, some, say something about the Italians. There you go. Say something, two young, two young snot noses. Say something about the Italians. I said, I like the Italian food. What is it with these guys? They're all fighters. Just like what happened to me at uh, a couple weeks ago at uh, Costco's. The guy says he's gonna bust me up. <laughs> because I, I says I don't want that slice, I want a different slice to pie it look better. Mr. Messi, your time is up. You don't want to hear about the Sorry. tomato pie story? Time is up. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. Yeah, well I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Homedale. Help, help! Somebody out there, Mr. listen Messi. to me. Thank you. Uh, just a quick reminder, we are all citizens and uh, there are no boundaries in the Constitution in the United States that you know, ensure that our rights, so everybody has the right to come here and address this council and make sure that, you know, that it is heard and for you we, people. We listen to him every week. Yeah, we, right, we, and, to, we and have that aid and to help these people no matter what it is, okay? And whether or not it's germane to the uh, council. Okay, a uh, moment of silence for all the uh, seniors and businesses who are losing their homes due to accommodation and that pilot tax scheme that the mayor has. Okay, good. A uh, few quick things here. The National Trails Day is coming up uh, June 2nd. I don't think we're going to meet before then, are we? No? 
No. I don't believe so. Miss, I don't think so, but I, I told the Council Bauer over there to put it on the webpage. They're going to have a little thing in touch, and, and it's the whole Greenway over there, too, so you could do something with that. Um, the um, intersection, briefly, I, I talked to him at the Walmart intersection over there. I don't know if I told you about it, over in Hoquan. It, has, it needs uh, lines and stuff like that over there. It needs delineated crosswalks. They come zooming out of there to cars from New York and stuff like that. You know, it's terrible. They go blasting down uh, West Pond over there. Um, Quincy Court, anything going on over there? Quincy Court, hello. The new guy. <laughs> Nothing since I told you last time. Yeah, a couple a, weeks. You know, there's a, um, a councilman can answer that one. Oh, like. anything? The same, same old, same old. Well, we answered the last meeting, but uh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. We have a whole town. Uh, yeah. Coming in to uh, come to the old path mark. Uh, the developers working with the property to have a access road over Pennsylvania Avenue to leave all the traffic of Aaron and Emmett Avenue. Yeah. And uh, I think we're getting some retail in the other part of the town. All right. Store. Same old, same old on that. Okay. Um, I'm really uh, excited about the community center over there. The first time I was in there like uh, for like 12, 14 years like that. Do you have plans of opening an indoor skateboard park in the foyer? I mean, the whole indoor is like all these waves and stuff like that and the, the cracks and everything. Have you been in there lately? Yeah, I'm there quite often. Yeah, hi. I mean, yeah, I don't, I'd like to put a laser level on it, but I mean, how bad is the building sinking? And uh, the sidewalk is sinking outside, and part of the roadway too. Have you taken a look at it, or are you going to fix it, or what? Anything? You want to take that, Director? Uh, I visually inspect the building every day because that's where I go to work. Um, the the floor in, in has just been replaced and is extremely level. Uh, there's very few sidewalks that are, that have any pitches to them. They're inspected daily. How about that mechanic? The, road, the roadway by the stop sign is yep. being being repaired uh, as we speak. Dennis, uh, Dennis, Director Dennis Henry's crew is there, and they're repairing that roadway. Okay, let's keep. Thank a, you, Council President. Let's keep an eye on that. That would be pretty good. Thank you. Um, parking permits, uh, Dean Delina Manor. I mean, what could we do? Could we do anything for the people over there? Or? I don't believe we've had any complaints so uh, Well, I, I don't want to have to go to the police director and stuff like that and find out how many uh, people have called in, but um, let's see what we could do with that. Um, great, that great paranormal thing you had over by the high school was pretty good over there. All the people I got to meet, that Steve Gonzalez from the Atlantic Paranormal Society, pretty good. And uh, boy, I wasn't as scared. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, the last time I was that scared, I mean, I saw the... Uh, neighbor's tax bill and you know came in here and I was like whoa I was really frightened I was that was more scared than that so we did with that uh, lastly um, council uh, uh, Carol Ehrlich is the head of the redevelopment in the township that's correct. right um, there's this thing it's called the shortage of land it takes the state to create space um, this was smart growth you're familiar with the smart growth plan in the uh, township on here she sits on a committee or a group the chair is Morris Davis, academic director for real estate at Rutgers Business School. And their one um, entity is to uh, figure out ways to swindle the land from the people. I only got like 35 seconds left over here. But I think we have to look at this and maybe you can find out more about it. I'll give you a copy over here. And uh, what they do, they have to unlock the value and they conspire and they figure out ways to take the property from the people that will benefit the developers and stuff like that. It's right here, I'll show it to you, and uh, you might wanna go with that. It was on the, uh, the internet, and it's called Smart Growth Coalition Offers Murphy Blueprint for Economy. Shovel ready? Nah, you're burying the taxpayer in town. Hey, pretty good, all right, thank, thank you. you. Any other comments from the public? You know the comment can I get a motion that this portion of the meeting be closed? Motion. Second. Okay. Thank you. Favor aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. We will now go into our agendas. I will start. I'm going to go down to item number eight for the Colonia Fire Department. Uh, on June 2nd, uh, uh, Saturday, June 2nd, Colonia Fire Department will be celebrating their 75th anniversary. They'll be having a parade down Cleveland Avenue, which will go to Colonia Middle School. It starts at 12 o'clock. The picnic starts about 12.30. It is open and free to the public. We ask that you come down and, and celebrate the 75th anniversary with the Colonial Fire Department. This, uh, going down to item number 10, 
veterans issues. This, uh, this Sunday, May 27th, we will be doing a service for uh, a Marine that was killed in Afghanistan on at 11.15 at Charlie Shaughnessy Park. We ask that you come out and join us. Afterwards, we'll walk across the street to the VFW and there'll be another service there followed by a barbecue, which is $10 a person. They'll have a lot of food, come out, join. There'll be a lot of veterans there and it's a great, great time and everybody should come out and see our vets. Um, going down to number 13, Heroin Task Force. On June 1st, they will be having a beach blanket bingo, and that will be at Sycamore Senior Center. It's $25 for three cards, and the doors open at 6 o'clock, and bingo starts at 7 p.m. If you would like tickets, you can call Bonnie Nolan at 732-395-8609. And just a shout out to our Woodbridge police officers. In appreciation of Police Week last week, I'd like to just take a moment to thank the Woodbridge Police Department for everything they do for the Township, township of Woodbridge to keep the residents safe and protected, but also for the work they do behind the scenes. While they're not working, many residents don't realize the things they do and when they volunteer. Whether it's playing hop hop hockey to help raise money for Buddy Ball or a veterans organization, like they did last week, along with the fire department, raise money for a chick sick child like they do for the flute tournament, which will be held this June, or taking time out of their busy schedules at Christmas to help a disadvantaged child. Last year, Woodbridge police officers volunteered their time to take approximately 20 children, underprivileged children, shopping at Toys R Us so that they would have toys for the holiday. I had the privilege to be there and saw how those officers interacted with children and how the officers enjoyed the morning as much as the children did. After they were done shopping, the officers brought them back to an ISM firehouse where another 15 or so Woodbridge police officers volunteering their time made breakfast for the children and their family. We not only have the best officers in the state of New Jersey, we also have the most compassionate and kind ones. So in honor of Police Appreciation Week, on behalf of the council, I'd like to say thank you to all of our wonderful officers. And also in honor of Veterans Day, I'd like to thank all those who are presently serving, those that have served in the past, and those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. This Memorial Day weekend, while you're enjoying barbecues and outings with your families, Please remember to take a moment out to thank a veteran or attend one of our many vet, many services that are held throughout Woodbridge Township. And thank you to all our veterans for their service. <clears throat> Vice President Spiller. Thank you, Council President. <clears throat> Item number one on my agenda. I'd just like to thank everyone, all the residents who uh, came out and enjoyed Avenel Community Day this, sat this past Saturday. Short rain, but uh, we had plenty of fun. Um, I want to thank my committee. I'd like to thank the mayor, the administration. Uh, directors Hubner, Simaluka, and Henry, um, your crews hit it out of the park, especially all week long. It seemed like it rained every day last week, and they were out there. So several hundred people showed up. It was a great day. So, And uh, in the next few weeks, just uh, listen, we will be announcing the annual the 2018 Earl Runkle Memorial Scholarship Awards. Uh, item 13, the Cable Commission. The survey has been completed. It was on uh, websites been taken off. I want to thank all the residents that took the time to uh, fill out the survey. Uh, the Cable Commission, the Township Administration constantly strives to uh, get the best cable services uh, for our residents. So we'll now move into that next phase. Uh, the rest of my agenda is in order. Just a few announcements. Um, Avenel, please join us. Avenel Fire Company will be having their annual memorial services this Monday Memorial Day at 9.30 at the firehouse on Avenel Street and the Avenel VFW located on West Park Avenue will be having their annual memorial services at 10 a.m. So I wish everyone to have a happy and safe Memorial Day. Um, if you allow me, I'll move into Councilwoman Jesus' agenda. Um, she had some surgery, so just keep her in your prayers. Prayer, uh, speedy recovery. Uh, under, <clears throat> I had her agenda. Under community policing, I believe it's item uh, item number six. Uh, the community policing unit will be finishing their last class at the Senior Police Academy before graduation. They will also be attending our local high schools uh, with our bi-weekly police interaction program. We will, they will also be attending local preschools to talk about talk to the children about strangers. Um, the Barron Arts Center, excuse me, Barron Arts Center is having an event, Frontline Arts at the Barron Arts Center. 
Exhibit dates are May 31st through June 17th. There's an opening reception May 31st from 7 to 9. Frontline Arts strives to connect and build communities through socially engaging art practices rooted in papermaking and printmaking. And there are still there is still time to purchase your tickets for the 350th anniversary gala. That's next Friday, June 1st. You contact 732-634-4500 for tickets. Uh, the rest of her agenda is in order. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Drum. Oh, thank you, Council President. Uh, number one, Relay for Life. Uh, the annual Relay for Life event is on June 9th at uh, Woodbridge High School. Uh, there's still time to sign up for a team, make a donation, um, follow the event online or through Facebook. They're looking forward to uh, having another successful event, and it's going to start at noon, and it'll go to midnight. So we appreciate your help in supporting and fighting for the finding a cure for cancer. Number five, the Chamber of Commerce and the Colonia Business Group are um, coupling, going together and doing a networking event on June 13th from four to six at three and one restaurant on Inman Avenue in Colonia. And if you would like to register, you can register online or call the chamber office at 636-4040. Number 12, I think it is, or 17 Elks Lodge, 2116, the Woodbridge Elks, tonight um, presented a $500 check to the Woodbridge Police Department Community Policing Unit, the DVRT, Domestic Violence Response Team, and the Health Department Addiction Services Director from a grant that they applied for. Uh, so we appreciate their involvement in the community and their opportunity to award this grant money to our township. And they surprised Mayor McCormick um, in becoming the Elk of the Month. So that was a nice surprise. So we appreciate that. Number 18, Woodbridge Fire District number one is proud to announce their first annual Junior Fire Academy. It will be held at Woodbridge Fire Department on School Street. The one week camp will be held on July 23rd through July 27th. Since this is their first time having the Junior Fire Academy, they're limiting it to, I believe, 40 uh, students. They are students that are going into sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. They will be able to attend the academy. It's gonna be on a first come, first serve basis, but they're gonna try to uh, have it for the district one residents um, will have preference and then they'll open it up to the rest of the township. Uh, for additional information, you can contact the office of the Woodbridge Fire Chief at 732-602-6040. They're going to offer an introduction to apparatus equipment review and chemistry of fire, personnel accountability, officer roles and responsibility, physical fitness and basic first aid, and introduction to CPR. They're gonna to tour the Middlesex Fire Academy. They're going to offer introduction to ladder teamwork and placement and much more. So if you're interested, uh, please contact the Woodbridge Fire Chief. And then the last one is number 19, the Woodbridge Center Drive Improvements Project. The paving operations have been successfully completed and the remaining traffic signals construction will be completed in the upcoming weeks. Thank you, that's all I have, Council President. Thank you. Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Council President. I'm going to hold on uh, number one. I will go down to Job Bank. Uh, again, I wanna let you know that our house um, is seeking employees. Do you have an interest in working with adults with developmental disabilities? Our House Incorporated is seeking direct care professionals for day and residential programs. Visit www.ourhousenj.org slash careers. Secondly, Woodbridge is looking to uh, start our own Baywatch team. So if uh, we can, we're looking for some uh, lifeguards for our community center. Um, so if you are interested in, in particular, we're looking for morning shift lifeguards. You can contact the Woodbridge Community Center. Please contact Woodbridge Township personnel 634-4500, 732 area code, or Aquatics Coordinator John Kohatanitz, 732-596-4193. And uh, for any of our young people in, that are looking for jobs in the mall, um, Aunt Annie's, Auntie Annie's, who have the best pretzels around, um, and uh, Woodbridge Center 
They are hiring, so you can apply in person there. And Chick-fil-A, as we all know, has been a great addition to our community and our, our fast food restaurants. Um, they are hiring, and you can also apply in person there. And now hiring also is uh, Ferrara, um, Ferrara Bakery, 915 Amboy Avenue, Perth Amboy, New Jersey. Limited positions available, but they're looking for general workers and line workers. I'll move on down to the tooling around the township. Uh, on April 28th, hundreds of volunteers came together once again to selflessly donate their time, skills, and hard work efforts to tooling around the township program. Through their labors, we were able to perform the necessary work to repair and clean up the homes of 19 senior, disabled, and or low-income residents throughout the township. Mayor McCormick and the rest of the council would like to once again thank all of our volunteers, businesses, and restaurants who participated in the program. Without their hard work, dedication, and donations, the program would not be nearly as successful as it has become. For any residents who submitted their application for 2018 and unfortunately did not submit it in enough time to be selected for this year's program, your application will be filed until next year, at which point you will be contacted to begin the selection process. If you have never submitted an application, and would like to be considered for the 2019 program, please submit your application no later than December 31st of 2019. And actually that would be 2018, right? To December of 2018, not, if you wanna be considered for the 2019 program, you have to submit it by December 31st, 2018. Thank you very much and that is all I have. Councilman Thank you, Council President. Uh, the Woodbridge Community Center and Recreation Department, the Highland Grove Pool and Spray Park uh, memberships are now available, and the pool is open to uh, scheduled to open on Memorial Day weekend. The uh, our community center, our beautiful community center in the Highland Grove uh, area I just mentioned, camps are now open for registration for the summer, chock full with activities for the young people. Uh, also, there's memberships available for our community center, which looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, recent renovations to the strength and cardio rooms, everything from new carpeting and painting. It just, it's very inviting and uh, it just generates a lot of excitement about healthy lifestyles. So uh, congratulations to Director Sembaluka and his staff for that, that project that I, I believe is still ongoing, but it's absolutely beautiful. I've had the opportunity to be there a few times and it's just great. Uh, moving down to item number three, a, a big thank you goes out to all of our township agencies for their participation in Senior Month. Um, the mayor had his summit last week and it was well attended. There's so many great things going on for our seniors and as I said, um, I, I don't really see too many senior citizens. I do see a lot of active older Americans out there. Uh, moving down to item number five, the where, uh, Mayor's Fitness and Wellness Initiatives. The Mayor's Annual Walk on the Greenway is Wednesday, June the 13th, starting at 6 p.m. at Dudash Park, which is on Main, May Street, the border of Woodbridge and Edison. Um, moving down, continuing to move down to some of the events coming up. Uh, most of us are already aware that our 4th of July celebration in Woodbridge is July the 3rd. Uh, and the park will open at 4 p.m. that day. It will be closed up until 4 p.m. and then opening. The following week, we've got our great uh, annual pizza run, which is uh, July the 11th, and that's over at Alvin P. Williams Park. Um, as my other council mates have said, a special thank you to all of our veterans for their service, uh, and I wish everyone the best on uh, the Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Small. Thank you, Council President. Just a reminder to the public that this week, Sunday, May 20th through the 26th, is EMS week. On behalf of the uh, Council, I'd like to uh, congratulate our EMS manager, Laura Higgins, and all the men and women of our uh, first aid squads that provide uh, emergency medical services and uh, continue the good work. Number eight school projects, as School 29 on Oak Tree Road and School 11 Ross Street uh, continue their projects. We broke ground this week and Woodbridge Middle School, and it's going to be an exciting uh, two years to watch these uh, projects develop. Number nine, senior transportation. I just want to remind our, our seniors that uh, this service is provided for residents 60 and older 
It's a share ride with other passengers. Buses run Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Reservations are required. All buses are handicapped except accessible. To make a reservation, you can call the Evergreen Center at 732-726-2394. Uh, transportation is provided uh, on a daily basis at the Evergreen Center, Sycamore Center, Woodbridge Main Library, Woodbridge Community Center, medical appointments to local uh, doctors and medical buildings. Transportation is also provided to the following uh, locations weekly or monthly basis, ShopRite, Walmart, River Center. Uh, call for a schedule and transportation is also provided for special <coughs> events, Mayor's Concert Series, our Farmer's uh, Market and our Firework Display in July. On uh, number 11, memorial services will be held at the Port Reading Firehouse on 9 at 9 a.m. on Monday morning for the Port Reading Fire Department, Port Reading First Aid Squad, and Ladies Auxiliary. And to uh, Director uh, Henry, there was a serious motor vehicle accident uh, on Rosewood and Fourth. Uh, the guardrail was mangled. It was a very dangerous situation. So I just want to thank your guys for getting out there in a hurry and uh, correcting that problem. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Patel. Yeah, thank you, Council President. <clears throat> My agenda is in order. I have a few announcements. Uh, the first one is uh, Islin Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 2636 will hold their Memorial Day services at the Post Monument on North Avenue in Islin. This monument is located behind the Post Building, and the services will be on Monday, May 28th, from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. Also, we have Islin Branch Library will be hosting their 50th anniversary. And this 50th anniversary celebration will be on Tuesday, June 19th. And there will be a ribbon cutting and grand reopening of the library, and that will take place about noon time. They are also preparing celebration book and the flyer. For the flyer and the celebration book sponsorship, you may call Wendy Roth Wheeler at 732-726-7073, extension 7222. Also, we have JFK Memorial High School in Islin will have their senior award ceremony and the scholarship program on this Tuesday, I mean this Thursday, May 24th at 6.30 p.m. That's, for, that's all for tonight, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Bauer. Thank you, Council President. Uh, item number two, the Middlesex County Greenway, an open space resource, a 3.5 mile track for walking, biking, and jogging located in Woodbridge, Edison, and Metuchen, is holding their Echo Tour on Saturday, June 2nd, meet at 9 a.m. at the Trailhead in Middlesex Avenue in Metuchen. Item number six, I have the Ford's Business Community. Their first annual cruise night will be Monday, June 4th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m at the Cypresteens parking lot at 372 New Brunswick Avenue in Fords. For more information, contact Jay McLaughlin at 908-930-6160. Uh, item number eight, Fords VFW, post 6090, will be holding their annual Memorial Day services on Monday, May 28th, 11 a.m. at the Memorial Monument on King George Road in Fords. And a special thanks to all our veterans out there. And I have one announcement tonight. Uh, the Church of the Jesus Christ, located at 393 Florida Grove Road in Hopelon, is having their Family Fun Day and Yard Sale Saturday, June 9th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's a free event with free activities and treats, so come out and uh, support the church. And the rain date is June 16th, 2018. That's all I have tonight. Thank you, Council Thank President. You. Mr. Mitch. Thank you, Council President. Just uh, to touch on a couple items. One, uh, love, number one, letters A, B, and C are still under investigation by the police department. Uh, hopefully, they'll some of them be released. Uh, our next for our next meeting. I'll also be getting letter D, which is a change of corporate structure for what used to be the Ford Gym, which is now the Lady Shop. Uh, the big work just came in today. I'll drop down to number six under elections, uh, since we will not be meeting now until after the election. Voter registration deadline for the primary has passed, but the deadline to apply for mail and ballot by mail is May the 29th, and the deadline to apply for mail and ballot is in person is June the 4th. Everything else is in order. Thank you. Senator Bennett. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the first item um, that will be presented on June 12th will be the uh, change order on the main library ramp that 
um, job is in progress right now. This is a, um, just some additional work that needed to be done. I believe it's with the railing, uh, just to make sure that it was be finalized. And then the Oak Tree Road Project Evergreen Lease, that's um, going to be the lease um, for five classrooms that's currently being used as a renewal. And then the shared services agreement with the Board of Education, there are two of them, they deal primarily, well, one's the cable TV and the other one's dealing with the um, tech. Um, and that deals specifically with our people doing, working in the schools, doing the work in the schools. The um, firewall upgrade is to purchase through the uh, co-op and the two state contracts are also in the um, technology field and been being presented through the tech. Um, the, uh, and the other two are um, housekeeping refunds being returned. And that's all I have. Thank you. Director Hutton. Thank you, Council President. A proposal to, uh, to add three handicap spots throughout town, uh, the removal of two spots that are no longer in use, and the change of five handicap placard numbers throughout town. Thank you. Thank you. Director Green. I don't have anything to add. Thank you, Council President. Director Simaluka. Nothing this evening. Thank you, Council President. Director Darden. Thank you, Council President. It's um, that time of year again. We need to, uh, in accordance with our uh, HUD grant for the Community Development Block Grant, perform an annual action plan. So we'll have a resolution in front of you next meeting uh, in order to do that. Uh, it's time to update the annual increase of regional income limits in accordance with uh, the state and the recognized income limits that are raised through the federal government matching back to HUD on an annual basis. Um, and then we'll also have an affordability assistance agreement for you utilizing some co funds. Thank you. Thank you. Director Henry. <coughs> Director Henry. It's you. It's you. They want to give your report. Yes. Thank you, Council President. Just my normal bomb releases. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>